Hey everybody, welcome back to the 2024 Pepsi Select Football Media Day presented by GM and the Jackson State Tigers roaring on the stage right now. Second year head man T.C. Taylor, kind enough to join us now and oh yeah, how's it feeling to sit? What's been going on? It's going good. You know, uh, the players been working all summer, you know, got some new coaches in the building. Everything's going Pretty well right now. Looking forward to this upcoming season. All good right, to see you guys. Too. Good to see you. Yeah. I mean, you made some debut last year yeah. on ABC as a head coach. Well, that's what I've been telling everybody. You know, last year I was like the new guy on the block, new kid on the block. You <laughs> what, we got not, what, five today? Yes. That yes. is crazy. You yes. know, so good luck to them. <laughs> a lot of depth returning from last year. I think what stands out, uh, the defense and, and the way that you all read, led the nation at the end of the regular season. Mm -hmm. Some lot of A lot of high points there. Guys that you got back. Yeah. Um, you know, what leaves you hopeful for this year? Are you going to be a defensive-led team or an offensive-led team? I just want to be a good football team. You know, want to be better at all three phases of the game. You know, uh, you talk about uh, the defense, though. It, it's some really good players coming back on that side of the football. Jeremiah Williams, Isaiah Guthrie, who's here with me today. Uh, you talk about leaders. You know, those guys was there on that last year's team, but, you know, just – trying to find ways to develop and get their teammates to believe in them. And um, that secondary is pretty good. You know, led the nation in picks last year. We got quite a few guys returning there as well. So I'm excited about the defense going forward. Okay, before we go forward too much, let's reflect back. And I want to know what was going through your mind. I thought it was one of the highlights of the 2023 football season. You were in your first game, mm. and the crowd <laughs> starts saying, T.C., T.C., telling you they appreciate all the hard work and they were happy you got the job. Mm -hmm. What was going through your head and what did that feel like to you? It was a, a blessing. It was a blessing, man. But, uh, you know, like I told the players after that game, you know, I gave it all to them. And, you know, I couldn't do it without them and those coaches on that night. But to go against a legendary coach like Buddy Pugh in Atlanta in that, uh, on that stage and to get that win, it was huge, man. It felt good. Brought back memories as a player, you know, doing some good stuff as a player at Jackson State. But it's a moment I'll never forget. My family, my sons, they talk about that to right now. First win versus Buddy Pugh, that's, that's historic. You that is. Take that with you. Yeah. But as we know it's college football. Yeah. What have you done for me lately? Lately, no doubt. No, no, no doubt. And, it, you know, you think about last season, that last game against Alcorn ending with a loss, you know, with it, still a bad taste in our mouth. That's a huge rivalry game. But uh, let me say this, you know, um, thinking about last season as first-year head coach, 12 teams in the conference, five teams with winning records and being one of those teams, we had something to build on. You know, we look forward to this season. You talk about the guys coming back. Um, we lost some coaches. We lost some really good coaches. I had to replace six coaches this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, and um, we got younger with the coaches, with this coaching staff. Uh, really got some high-level guys. I wanted to improve the energy there, you know, with those coaches, and they've done a great job. But looking forward to it, you know, and, uh, you know, like you said, though, th this year, you know, we're looking forward to it. What's been the biggest change you've had to learn in terms of being a top-tier assistant coach to now being the head coach? You have to oversee so much, <laughs> you know? <laughs> when you're an assistant coach, you're just coaching about nine guys in a room, mm -hmm. or at the receiver position or wherever that may be. But now I get these questions about the training room, the equipment, you know, what, what's going on in the cafeteria. It's just the, the management of the football team. You have to be on point with the management of your football team because as the head coach, the little things was what matter. You know, it's just you can't worry about the X's and O's of the program. It's just you have to be a manager of everything going on from top to bottom. And then the main thing is getting everybody in the building to understand your vision. You know, what you want this football team to look like for us, dressing everything from top to bottom. You know, all that, all that stuff matters. TC, correct me if I'm wrong. You said some coaching changes, but a little birdie told me you're going to be the play caller yeah. this season. <laughs> so you're talking about all that you have to manage and do, but you're also taking on that responsibility Why? as a play caller. Yeah. Why? Why? I, I miss it. I miss it. Uh, I'm not going to lie to they you. They got video games. You call your, your video games. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, what's the new yeah. college just college dropped, right? Back. It just back. dropped. But, nah, I'm excited about that. You know, I've done it for a long time. But also, too, you know, I got trust on what the people around me. Uh, Javancy Jones came in as my special teams coordinator. He's going to do a good job there. Uh, Quinn, Terenzo Quinn be leading the defense. We added some great coaches on the offensive side of the ball. Eric Gallen came over from a &T. Uh Manny Ramirez come from Texas Southern. That uh, run game over there led to uh, – conference the last two years you know so they're going to help me and make my job easier but uh, you know I think we got the pieces in the place as well I, you know I always talk about it's the Jimmy's and Joe's 
You know, it don't matter about the play call. It's, you know, I'm not out there on the, the field executing those plays. It's going to be those guys going out there and doing it the right way, starting at the quarterback position. Introducing some new faces, some continuity within your roster, but what's not going to be easy is the upcoming schedule for I the know, year. Right? Uh, and it, it could be said for every team, but uh, is there a stretch or a block of games that you look to or, or maybe a couple of dates that you circle? And outside, don't give me this answer, T.C. Okay. Every game is an important game. No, I got The next you. game is that you. game. <laughs> what, what do you see? Uh, that, the month of September is going to be critical for us. You talk about taking care of those Louisiana schools. You got Southern coming in town. You know, it was a 1 o'clock kickoff, got moved back to 6 o'clock. You know, people will be there eating barbecue all day and getting ready for that night game. It's going to be crazy. It was a crazy game last year, you know, when we go down there on the road to play them and then to turn around and go get on the, uh, the buses and head down to Gremlin and see Coach Joseph down in the hole down there. You know what it's like when you're walking down that hill. you got to be ready to go. And then you got fam, you coming into town. You know, it's some big football games on our schedule this year. Now, you know what's unique about this one? And I won't say this too often. September, important. You know, you're going against those Western schools out there. Mm -hmm. But y'all got a chance. If you're playing your best football at the end of the season, you can almost play yourself back into it. If things don't Correct. go right, going at Alabama State, mm -hmm. where everybody's going to have bulls out on their back. And then at Alcorn, a little redemption right there. So mm -hmm. th this team right here, and even if you get off to a good start in September, you got to maintain it through the end because those two games at the end are very important. Yeah, and if you look at it, um, like that schedule, those, those are the two programs and you're on the road. You know, usually that Alcorn game is played in Jackson. That's Capital yeah. City Classic. Oh, but you got to go one now. way in, one way out down there in Lorman. <laughs> and the then trace. everybody knows what Alabama State doing right now. They're doing some great things, you know, over there with that program. Eddie Robinson did a great job. And two teams that beat us last year, let's be honest. You know, that we got to go on the road and figure it out. And, you know, um, but like I told the team, too, for us, too, also the emphasis is playing better at home. You know, we did. I thought we were solid on the road, but we got to be better in front of our home fans. Well, a great crowd, home crowd, always. Oh, always, definitely. Always when you go definitely. to the Memorial definitely. Stadium. Definitely. So we have heard from Coach T.C. Taylor, but we've got to hear from a couple of these preseason all-swag selections and Evan Henry, who's going to be blocking up front along that offensive line, and Asayas Guthrie, who's locking down in the secondary. These guys came fitted back-to-back -back years where y'all are kind of just stealing the show when it comes to the outfits and Isaiah's. It's all about the details on the field and on the fit. Can you let the people see what y'all have going on with these suits? Yeah, of course. Um, we got Kyra's Customs on the suits. Um, small details, small details. Um, me personally, I got Hermes on the belt, Rolex on the watch, Hermes on the feet. And I like how we have the bow tie over here and then we have the traditional tie. Y'all also have y'all initials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Initials on the sleeve, E H E G on the sleeve. You got the money sign on your nails, just yeah. all the details. And we also have some preseason honors over here. Second team, first team. How did it feel to get that recognition? Um, you know, we just preach on our sides, good isn't good enough. You know what I mean? Um, coming off of last season when um, our DB group led the nation in picks and the FCS was number two in national. Um, and then to come back this season, only have one guy on it. Um, good isn't good enough. And that's how we're taking it. Uh, it's just a, a blessing to be here, honestly, uh, having the opportunity to, to represent my school, uh, being a first-team all-conference guy. Um, just hope, I'm just hoping to have the same opportunity at the end of the year um, to stay a first-team all-conference guy. And what should the I Love Nation be excited about when it comes to the defense and offense this season? Um, our growth. You know, we, we came out last year and showed that we can be um, a defense that really dominates. Um, in certain areas, but now it's just growing on that and being consistent and dominating every game. Uh, like you said, being consistent. Um, I think the offense uh, had a whole offense uh, off season to show the camaraderie, um, to uh, build upon what happened last year. Um, I think we did a lot of great things last year, but um, I think this off season has given us an opportunity to expand on that. I would say y'all did a lot of great things last season. You went 7-4 in a year that some people could have said should have been a rebuild, a new head coach, a lot of new additions on the team when it came to the roster. How can y'all build on that success from last year? Playing with the JSU block on your chest, you know, it's all about the legacy that, that, that came before you. Um, coach TC is a, is a part of that great legacy, and so 7-4 was not good enough, um, and we're not going to act like it was. You know, we're going for it all going for it all, and the competition is thick in the East. What is it going to take to separate yourself and go for it all, the SWAC title? Um, just playing one game at a time. Um, 
locking in every week on that opponent, uh, being great uh, that week, and then going into the next week with the same chip on our shoulder uh, for 11 games straight um, until we get to that safe sweat championship game. And just to uh, continue to show the growth week in and week out, um, how we start shouldn't be how we finish the year. Good isn't good enough. Seven and four is just all right. I know Coach TC is love everything he's here <laughs> from his players right now. Coach, you got to be proud of those young men and just the way they, they represent it. But also, um, I don't know what kind of bag y'all got. Man, they got bags. But I'm bag. just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> what, 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 what he's wearing, what you got? Okay, see? Rolex. Rolex, Hermes on the belt. Okay. Uh, you don't see this nice tiger tie coming through here? <laughs> I mean, shout out to Kyrie's Customs. You know, did a great job of getting our, our guys fitted up as well. I, as I'll see my so, sizes. Uh, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come down for a fitting. And get some of that good Let old Johnny know. T's, that John T's. <laughs> oh, that's good where it started. Oh, that's yeah. where it started. Oh, I, I know, I know that's where it started. I know the sip. Fly off the field and hoping they can fly around on the field. T.C. Taylor, Sayas Guthrie, Evan Henry, thank you so much for your time and good luck for the upcoming season. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you guys, too. Appreciate what you guys do. Bye-bye.